In this section, we will talk about containers and try to compare containers with virtual machines since they are two different ways of uh, implementing uh, cloud native applications. So uh, before we read the text here, uh, I would like to draw your attention towards uh, these uh, three uh, pictures down here. Uh, and what they show are the different comparisons of uh, running your applications. So we are aware of the traditional architecture that we have looked in the past, where we have custom hardware uh, running custom OS, and then we have custom applications that are tied uh, to the OS and the hardware. Uh, then we looked at the VM-based architecture or virtual machines, where we have COTS hardware, commercial off the shelf, uh, with a guest OS uh, and a hypervisor, which is the uh, control management layer. And then these are the VMs, um, and these VMs can run their own independent uh, custom OS, which can be different uh, from your guest OS that was running here. Uh, and your applications can talk to each other uh, 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 directly. Uh, so that's the VM-based way of doing things. Now, container-based uh, architecture takes this whole concept uh, one step further. And what it really does is it uses COTS hardware like we were using before. Then we have the guest OS. And then instead of the hypervisor here, we have what is called a container orchestrator. Container or orchestrator is also the management entity for managing the life cycle of containers. Uh, you may ask, okay, what do we mean by life cycle? So life cycle, if you recall, uh, I had mentioned in the past is uh, life cycle of a container would encompass all the different tasks related to the container, starting from uh, bringing up the container, uh, taking it down, upgrades, uh, and scaling it up and down depending on capacity needs. So all the management aspects around the container uh, or the uh, container in this case uh, are handled by the container orchestrator. And uh, popular uh, examples of container orchestrators are like Kubernetes, which is uh, probably the most popular orchestrator right now. Now, um, interestingly, we have three containers here. So let's label them C1, C2, uh, and C3. Now each container uh, is a uh, is a con is a containerized workload. We call these workloads, and they are uh, running a custom application uh, like before. But now instead of the custom OS, they have uh, they have all the libraries, the binaries, and the runtime uh, that are needed to run this custom application. So in a sense, you are not running a full fledged uh, custom OS as you were running here in the VM, rather you are running a very thin uh, and only the needed essentials for this application uh, within a given container. Like before, you can have uh, containers uh, talking to each other, so you can have inter-container communication, um, and uh, like before, we can have if one container goes out of service, the other container can run uh, and take over. So if we compare containers and virtual machines, uh, here are some key takeaways. Uh, containers are independent hosts for applications that use single stripped down version of an operating system to run. So like, instead of running a custom OS, full-fledged OS, we only run um, certain elements of that OS, like libraries, binaries, and the runtime. Virtual machines use the full version of the operating system. Containers run a virtualized workload processed by an application broken up into microservices, making them more lightweight and flexible than a VM. So typically uh, what happens is in a virtual machine, uh, I'm showing here where we have one custom application running in one virtual machine. The, if you look at the the industry, what typically happens is um, you have a, more than one custom applications actually running inside a VM. So you would have uh, essentially uh, like a VM um, that is having uh, multiple applications running 
inside it. Uh, so you have uh, app like uh, A, B, and you have C, and then you have the OS uh, running uh, in inside your VM. And all so you have in in case of the VMs, uh, you have more than one application running on a given VM. Uh, because you are really uh, running the full OS version here, so you might as well uh, run multiple applications to make use of all the, otherwise it will be a waste of capacity, right? Uh, uh, in comparison, in containers, what we do is we typically run one application in a container, and these containers are uh, are only running microservices, so what we call them as microservices. That means uh, they are only running very lightweight small components of your application and they work uh, in tandem with each other. So in, in that sense, they are a lot more flexible and lightweight compared to virtual machines. Uh, VMs can run full unaltered application orchestrated by hypervisor. So like we have seen here, uh, since we have the full OS here and we have the hypervisor, uh, they can run uh, a full on application as if it were running on a dedicated server like here right so uh, this in a sense is as good as uh, this right here right except for that here you are uh, virtualizing your underlying physical resources right uh, in com in comparison in co uh, containers typically you have to modify uh, your custom application and what we call is uh, the, the the technical term is you have to containerize your application to enable it to run in a container runtime um, so that's why uh, vms uh, can run the full unaltered version whereas containers there is some additional work uh, needed to containerize your application uh, both can scale up and down quickly and easily uh, because we here we have the hypervisor uh, here we have the orchestrator, but in general, uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is if you compare both of them, the speed of scaling up and down uh, is way faster in case of containers uh, because uh, they are more lightweight. Uh, uh, and uh, so, if you were to compare containers and virtual machines, containers are definitely uh, more efficient. So, hopefully, this clears. Uh, the differences between virtual machines and containers. The telecom industry was in the uh, was running in the traditional architecture. They moved over to the VM-based architecture, uh, and we saw this for the first time in 4G LTE, where a lot of the network elements were uh, now running uh, in virtual machines. So there was a lot of vendors offering um, virtual EPCs, evolved packet cores. And then um, it, by the time we had 5G now, uh, most of the network elements are going to be running in containers uh, because containers is a mature technology. And obviously, like we saw, what are the benefits uh, of containers versus virtual machines? So 5G has embraced uh, the containers right from the get-go um, and making it uh, a lot more flexible and lightweight.